Why did you start ultra running? When I was about to turn 30, I decided to run another marathon, decided to train right, and I did the Portland Marathon Training Clinic, and that's put on by a couple of old school ultra runners. So they were ultra runners back in the 70s. And um, so of course they were just teaching us to, to be marathoners, but uh, Walter Fink was the, the, the guy's name, and he had his Western States 24-hour belt buckle, silver belt buckle. Great. That meant that he had finished the Western States 100-mile endurance run in under 24 hours. 100 miles one day, I think is what it says. And that planted a little seed. They uh, explained how you could increase your speed only so much, but you can increase your endurance by like 10,000%. So I, I ran my marathon right about five years ago, and then I just kept going. I ran another marathon, and then uh, there is a Oregon Trail Ultra Marathon series that began in February. And so I just I did a, my, my first 50 kilometer trail run, and I decided to do as many runs in the series as I could. So. By uh, July of the next year, July of 2005, I was doing a 50 miler. And the next month, I did 100K. And the next year, I did that same series and capped it off with my first 100 mile run. When did barefooting enter the picture? Right about that same time that I was uh, training for a marathon, trying to train for it right, I had heard the recommendation to try to do maybe one run a week barefoot in the grass. I, I didn't understand why one would do that yet, but um, that, that seemed like a really interesting suggestion. And I would try it out, um, not so much in the grass, but uh, I would uh, take breaks from work, and I'd run a mile, then two miles, and I'd get up to maybe three miles barefoot. There was, there was something neat about it, but, um, but then I'd hit a hot day, I'd run a little bit different, and I'd get blisters, and I'd put my shoes back on for fear of sabotaging my next race. So I, I did that for a couple of years. My first 100 mile run, there was a guy, uh, named, his name's Barefoot Ted, and he was doing his first 100 mile run, and he was doing it in Vibram Five Fingers. And that, that made a lot of sense to me. It seemed to capture a lot of what I was looking for in barefoot running, but... Uh, was that the first time you had seen Vibram? First was time I had seen him, first time I had heard of him, just a crazy guy doing 100 miles uh, with little foot gloves. And so I, I, I got a pair pretty soon after. And I just started doing that once a week run in them on my regular kind of 10K course for six months or a year or so. Just went out for that one, one run a week, uh, built up my muscles, built, improved my form. Began to envision how, how this could be something I did more. I never imagined that it would become a tipping point where I got rid of my shoes altogether, but I began to think, could I, could I do a longer race, could I do an ultra marathon of these? Did your anthropology background and studying bones help you make the leap to go, I can do this? For me it was huge. Um, you know, since then there's been a little bit more um, public attention to the idea of barefoot. There's been a lot of articles that have come out and a couple of books, but at the time it was nothing that I had heard of, and I was really depending on my anthropology background to say, we're made to do this, and, and we're made to do it barefoot, to even tell me it was possible. So I, I began to think of it as a kind of experiment uh, in, in applied anthropology, of if we're made to do this, I should be able to, to eventually do this myself. So that, that became a driving force. The ideal of barefooting is that you can support yourself every step of the way. Right. And there's certain precursors you can have in place that make that a more logical leap for you. And you know, I see that for you being the, the anthropology background and studying bones and you know what did humans do before we had shoes and um, looking for that uh, magic bit of information that can help the person that's grown up in our culture hearing your feet can't, can't get you through your whole life. They need to be supported. You know, they're an inherently weak part of the system. And that seems to be the biggest bit of informa misinformation that, you know, I'm battling when I'm helping people get out of chronic pain with their feet. So, you know, any, any further thoughts on what could... Be, what are your thoughts? What's your encouragement to someone thinking about going barefoot? What would you say to them as their pep talk? 
Well, even even still, when I'm when I'm out running and I'm and I'm barefoot or uh, or, or minimalist without support, I still think of it as a little um, barefoot act of faith. Uh, and and that in, that in and of itself is uh, is sort of an exciting thing. You're you're out there. Uh, there's no you're not depending on anything other than what you carry with you in your feet and you discover when you take that little leap of faith and build up you know build up properly uh, with a, uh, you know not doing more than, than, than conditioned your feet to do at, at any given time you discover that you're made to do it your feet respond your feet feel good but when people say doesn't that hurt uh, when people ask questions like that, what I always tell them is it feels like a foot massage. You know, your feet are made to do this, and once you once you rehabilitate them, once you condition them to the run, um, or as long as you're not doing more than you're you're able to do, it's it's a massage that I I look forward to every day. If, if I haven't done it in a day or two, my feet start asking for it. I always recommend start start doing it once a week and. You know, when when some time goes by and you begin to feel ready for more, um, uh, go ahead and start incorporating more frequent or longer runs in. Uh, it really takes, I think, seeing seeing that it can be done to to believe it. A lot of people are still pretty bound to the idea that that maybe other people don't need shoes, but they do. <laughs> the the proof is in the pudding, isn't it? You you better taste the pudding and see what's in there. Yeah. Any cautions or you know experiences that you've been through that you could say, hey, look out for this. People seem to think that our streets are covered in glass and syringes. Um, and what I always tell them is, you become a very aware runner. It changes the way you think about running. You take off the iPod. You're more looking at the world around you, listening to your internal dialogue as you sort of calibrate to how you're doing and. and making sure that you're aware of what's what's in your environment and you would certainly need to be a more aware runner you, you have to know what's what's coming up uh, because if you step on a rock that's gonna hurt so you become aware of every footstep and the footprint you leave rather than plotting it through or crashing through the world in an insulated armored that's it exactly case. that's uh -huh. it exactly there was a book that came out last May uh, Born to Run by Christopher McDougall. When I started, or before this book, or other other information like this, there was nothing really telling you this was possible, and so it seemed like a really crazy thing to do. And, and I approached it very cautiously. But when people approach it with with a book in hand, saying not only this is possible, but maybe you should be doing it, some of that caution gets cast aside, and and people just uh, dive in and say, I've been running, you know barefoot for three months now and I'm up to 15 mile runs but now my foot hurts. It's like well yeah you're, you're rehabilitating your feet. Uh, if you haven't been using your feet there's muscles that aren't developed, there's tendons that aren't developed, there's all of your tissues have been uh, largely unused. Um, your, your shoes are sort of like a cast and if you think about a cast with a broken bone all your muscles all your tissues become very weak and emaciated. It's a crutch, and if, unless you put the crutch down, you right. remain atrophy. And so, when you take that shoe off, you, you are rehabilitating your, your feet um, and the whole system of mu muscles and tissues that accompany a natural running stride. Most people in shoes will run with a pronounced heel strike, but that's just something you don't do when you take the shoes off. So. So there's a transition time in, in the very way you run. I would say approach, approach with caution, listening to your body. It requires an awareness that your shoes allow you to do without. As you said, on every step, being aware of your step and your foot, footprint. Every run, every mile, every step, you, you need to be listening to your body and seeing if, uh, seeing if you're ready for that next step. So, Lace earned his first official sponsorship from Organic Drone, stands for sustainable self-support, and running 100 miles on your own barefoot feet is certainly that. Organically grown. Congratulations, Lace. Thank you.